this is Victoria Park in Bonington. As you can see today, there's uh, the kids having a sports day. It's always been a place for sports, especially in 1873, when the very famous Queen's Park Football Club and Clydesdale Football Club, two of the founder members of, sort of football in Scotland, um, played an exhibition match in this very park. At the time, it was called Rames Park. And on the day, there was 200 spectators came to watch this curious new game brought from the west side of Scotland. And amongst them were a number of members of the Heart of Midlothian Dancing Club. And they were blown away by this. They were normally doing like sort of gay dancing and stuff. But this time, it's like, wow, what is this amazing sport called football? And here is where it all began. This is the World's End pub. And this is where the old town of Edinburgh used to end. That's why they said it was the end of the world. And it's in the old town of Edinburgh that the story of hearts began. From the march with the heart of Midlothian. Boys up to hand and part. This is called the heart of Midlothian. And it was, it's on the side of the old toll booth in Edinburgh. This is where the toll booth was. And the toll booth was a, um, a prison, a very despicable prison. Everybody hated it. So what you've got to do as you're passing, you've got to spit, show your disgust. And that is uh, where the dancing club were named after, the Heart of Midlothian. It was made famous by Sir Walter Scott in the novel. Um, anyway, a little bit further down the road is the, the Tron Kirk, and that's our next destination. We've been waiting Victory to the heart of Midlothian So, after the game of football at Bonington, um, the lads from the dancing club, they met here in the Tron Kirk in the, in the old town and uh, it was there that they decided to form the football club and name it after the dancing club, the Heart of Midlothian Football Club. So they all pile out of the church saying, right, let's, let's do this. And a policeman there is saying, well, why don't you go to the, well, Scottish accent, hey, me, why, hey, man, why don't you go to the meadows, the lungs of the city, you know, and make you feel strong and all that nonsense. So they thought, let's go to the meadows, so let's wait, let's go. On the That, this is Bruntsfield Links 36 hole short golf course and it's free for the public, beautiful. And it's part of a, a long running tradition in uh, Edinburgh of, um, and the Meadows especially of sport. Um, I mean golf was invented in Scotland and this is what used to be a three hole course, one of the first ones in the world. And in the 1870s this is where all Edinburgh football was played. Um, and ten years later, as a Burnley fan, you know, I've read about it, we used to come up to the uh, Edinburgh, find the best players in, like, from hips and hearts, say to them, we can offer you like, a few quid extra, you know, three times your wage to play football at the Cathedral of Dreams turf more. Um, so yeah, we just, and at one point we had 10 Scottish players in, in the Burnley team, about 1890 or something. Anyway, but we're not here to talk about uh, my team, we're here to talk about hips and hearts. And down there was where the first ever derby was played, back in 1875, so let's go check it out. And we'll be singing. Uh, mate, what's your name? Jimmy Gordon. Are you a uh, Habby or Jambo? Jambo. Um, so can you tell us about this particular area? The, well, this is the Meadows, East Meadows. This is where the first game was played. Uh, Hearts started here. They moved from here to White Park in Gorgie, which yeah. is opposite the ground that they're on playing now, which is Tyne Castle. Yeah. Um, started in 1874. Um, brilliant team. Best team in the town. The best team in the town. Thing. And the good thing about the final is it's coming to Edinburgh instead of Glasgow for a change. That's true. So what, but what about this? Uh, um, this was the where the first derby was played, right? Well, this is where the Hearts first played. The Hearts first played Hearts, here? That was the first home ground. Right, okay. And then they would have played Hibs here. At, at, at that that was in, uh, I think it was Christmas Day or Boxing Day, 1875. Yeah, 18, 1874. 
before they started. Well, the boy was the next year the Hibs started in 1975. Yeah. yeah, I think it was 1-0 to the Hearts. Right, right, okay. I'll yeah, so, um, well, but what's the, the derby like for you? What's it's the, brilliant. There's yeah. no game like it. There's no game like it. I understand the Celtic Heart situation, the Celtic Rangers situation over there. It's less bigoted here, right. which makes it brilliant. There's all types, all sorts go to the game. There's a bit of animosity sometimes, but there's no religious bigotry. Right. Not now, not now. Okay. That's sort of, it's fallen out of the game, which is a good thing, uh, I believe. So are you going to Hamden? Take it? I'm trying to get tickets just now. Yeah. I've got two tickets for the Hearts end, right. but my son is a hip supporter. Oh, what's that like? It's so Christmas in your It's house. a bit difficult, it's a bit difficult, and he's born on Christmas Day. Right. But it's a bit difficult. He's 15 now, so I've kind of got to go with his flow, go with the thing. Yeah. If I can get a ticket for the Hibs end, the both of us will go. If yeah. not, I'll give my ticket to two friends yeah. who will go with my tickets, and I'll watch a game with my son somewhere from here. Okay, that's very normal of you. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, mate. Yes, well, the songs from the heart of Midlothian I love you having me in Cash you are matching And I'll follow you always On mountain is St. Patrick's Church and in 1875 on the 6th of August Edward Hannon and Michael Wheelerhan of the Catholic Young Men's Society decided to found a football club to raise money for victims of the potato fam famine and the team of form was Hibernian which is the, the Roman name for Ireland and um, yeah it was just a simple meeting and this is where it all began for the hips. to the Leith Territorial Battalion. There was a great train crash in 1915 as they were on the way to the Western Front in England. And the people of Leith, everyone in the regiment was from Leith and the people um, you know, paid for such a dramatic monument. And it's a sign of um, the fact that Leith, it's not Edinburgh, it's a separate part of it. Only in 1920s did they have a referendum to join the city corporation. And that sense of like self-identity, it, it, it's, it's it's a sense of pride in the Hips fans to say we are Leith, we are not Edinburgh, we are Leith, which the Jambors don't have. And despite the fact the Jambors have had the better record over the years, winning twice as many derbies, I think the Hips have a little bit more kudos because they've gone on to represent the whole of Scotland in the inaugural European Cup, 1956. They got to the semi-finals against Stade Reims from France. And um, in the 1961 Intercity First Cup, they met Barcelona in the quarterfinals. At the new camp, they drew 4-4. Um, great result. The Spaniards were trying to kill them at the end, apparently. And back at Easter Road, it was 3-2 to the Hibs. So they got to the semis, where at, they met AS Roma. It was 5-5 on aggregate after two legs. And in, in the final replay, they got beat 6-1. But even so, they did their, their town, their city, and their country a great credit. It's at Montgomery Park here, and um, we're heading towards um, Easter Road now. After the Christmas Day games against the Hearts, uh, the next year, in 1876, the Hibs joined the Scottish Football Association. And a year after, they finally got their first win against the Jambos, um, by which time they were becoming one of the strongest sides in Edinburgh. 
They were said to be a heavy, robust side. We passed, we dribbled well, and they were mighty kickers. The year after, 1878, they reached the fifth round of the Scottish Cup, and that really helped to get football going in the town, really kindled interest. And um, before then, it was a minority sport, but ever since, it's been a massive sport in uh, Edinburgh. So let's go down to East Road. This is Bothwell Street in Edinburgh and it's the site of the very first Easter Road Stadium for the Hibs. They moved here in 1880. Um, seven years later they won the Cup. Hibs won the Cup for the first time the Scottish Cup came to um, Edinburgh. The whole city was delighted. Really, um, the hearts were pissed off, but what can you do? Anyway, but what happened, that inspired a bunch of Irishmen in Glasgow to form their own football club. And they called it Celtic. They picked, they nicked the strip, they nicked half the team, all the best players, they all went to Glasgow. Other part of members of the team went down to England to get paid for professional football. It was a total nightmare for the Hibs. Before you know it, uh, gates started dropping, you know, the money started pouring out of the coffers. And in 1891, the Hibs went bust. Oh, it was a terrible tragedy. Valentine's Day it was. Anyway, good. That's right. A couple of years later though, they reformed after a meeting at the Buchanan Hotel, they reformed and they decided to um, build a new stadium and you can see that's where the site is, that's the new Easter Road now and that's where we're going now. Okay, let's go. Sir. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Ah, uh, Brian. So this is your shop, yeah? Yeah, it is. So you're a Habby or a Jambo? I'm a Hibs fan. Oh, well, we can kind of see that, yeah. <laughs> so what's business like now with the final coming up? It's really, really busy at the moment. Selling lots of stuff. Do you have any, anything, anything special for the final? Yeah, have a look final at. scarves. They're very popular. Yeah. And we sell them quite a lot of these. Yeah. Yeah, nice one. Aye. Anything else? Not really. Just, well, the, just the scarves? Yeah. We don't, we're just selling lots of programmes, you know, for the rounds leading up to the final. Lots of semi-finals, things like that. Right. So, um, are you, you were going through Hamden then, I take it? Yes, I'm, I'm So, what's it mean to you then to get to this final after all these years, like? Uh, well, I've been to two Scottish Cup finals now. Um, been disappointed. It would be great to win it. But I don't hold out high expectations, so I can't be too disappointed if we don't. Okay. So, just um, being realistic about it. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Looking forward to it anyway. So it'll be a good day out and hopefully we can manage to bring the cup by. Right. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure.